Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. This is going to be a continuation of setting up and milling the Zometry mill test part that has to be completed if you want to be a vendor for Zometry. When I get done with this series, I'll make a little playlist out of these so everybody has access to that if you want to play them one by one. And I'll put a link to the previous video that I did on this in the comments below. What I've done so far is I've set this part up and if I click on my setup and I simulate this, what we can see is the part has been faced off. And then I did a 2D contour to finish the part to size. Now, if I look at this from the side, what you're gonna see is there's material that is being held by the vice jaws that I wasn't able to go and clean up. And this video is gonna cover a lot of the common questions I get in the uh, support sessions that I do with customers about how do I flip a part over? How do I set up my stock? And you guys will get to see all those things that I do in this video. What I wanna do now is I wanna switch back to the design environment and I wanna add another vise. And I'm gonna use a slightly different vise configuration to machine the opposite side of this part. So I'm gonna switch from design, from manufacturer to design. And now I'm gonna to go to my data panel and I'm gonna find the vise that I want, which is going to be this MLOC 125 Slim with hard jaws. And I'll right click and I'm gonna assert this into my current design. As this comes in, I'm just gonna kind of orient it the way that I want it to go. So I'm gonna rotate this by 90 that way. And then I'll rotate this around 180 degrees. And I'll just pull this up and out of the way. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna use the joints to get this exactly perfect. And I'm just gonna hit okay. Close my data panel. And as I said, I'm gonna put these together using joints. So I'm gonna start the joint command and I wanna assemble the thing that can move to the thing that can't move. And I'm gonna find the bottom center point of the stock. That point is now gonna correspond with the top face of the part. I'll go ahead and click on that and you'll see a preview of just the component you're adding the joint to, which is the stock. You'll see that it comes in the wrong orientation, so I'll flip it. And once I hit the okay, everything will snap into place. I'm gonna rotate this around, I'll click on my view cube to get set up the way I want to. And now I'll shut off my first vise. So there's what the part's gonna look like in its second orientation. I wanna go and adjust the stock size. So I'm gonna right click on this vise and choose to break the link. And that'll expose all the parameters that I need so I can go to the modify menu and choose change parameters. So here's the original parameters of the stock, and I'm kind of just gonna go and match those, except for the Y. So I'm gonna change my X to be three, I'm gonna change my Y to be 1.88, and I'm gonna set my Z thickness to be one. I'll hit okay, and now you'll see my setup. The reason I set this to be 1.88 is because that's the actual uh, Y value of the part, and the hat of material is only bigger above the part and out here, so I want my vice jaws to look right, and that's why I set that up. I don't need to use the stock from solid in this case. So I'm going to go down there and find the stock and turn it off. And if I want to, if I don't want to see that joint, I can come to my joints folder and I can turn the visibility of that joint off. When we get to manufacture, it's going to be off anyway. I'll switch from design back to manufacture and I'll work on creating a new setup to get rid of that hat of material. I'm going to choose to create a setup. And the first things that I always do is I get my work coordinate system oriented the proper way. I'm gonna click on the base of the Z and any face that I want to be perpendicular to or any edge that I want to be aligned with. So I'll just use this face to be perpendicular to it. My X is going the wrong way. I'll click on the X arrow head to flip it the direction I want to go or I could choose the flip X option. Now I have my work coordinate system oriented the right way. I need to tell Fusion what my model is. So I'm gonna choose select by model and click on the actual model and now Fusion understands. And I can go to the stock and I'm gonna choose to do a fixed size stock. And I'm gonna make it the exact same size as my first setup. So I'm gonna say three in the X. I'm gonna say two in the Y. And for my Z height, I'm going to list that as being one inch. I wanna offset this from the bottom in this case for Z. And I wanna do a zero inch offset because this is my face down here that I've already faced and is nice and machined and I've got that sitting on my parallels. I'm gonna go back to my setup. I need to choose where I wanna put my work coordinate system. So I'm gonna click on the white dot and where I'm gonna locate this is on the bottom left uh, back of the stock. So what I can do is before I even put my part in there, I'm gonna set my Z off of the parallel. Then I'll put my part in the vise 
and I'm going to set my X and Y off the hat of material, which will be accurate enough for what I want to do in this operation is just to get rid of the hat of material. I'm happy with my choices. I can hit OK. And what I'm going to do now is just do an adaptive clearing to get rid of that hat of material above my part. So from the 3D menu, I'm going to choose adaptive clearing. I'm going to go select a tool. And the tool I want is already in my document. It's going to be the half inch flat. And I'm going to grab the stainless steel roughing parameter. So I'll select that on my geometry. I'm not going to select anything. I'm going to tell Fusion I want to remove anything that's stock inside of that yellow orange box there. And then for the heights, I do want to make a change here. Stock top is going to be fine, but I don't want to go to the model bottom. I want to go to the model top. So I'm just trying to get rid of that hat of material above the part. On the passes tab, I'm going to go with the default step over that Fusion came up with. Again, consult your manufacturer for what you can do for a step over on your machine and your tool. Three quarters of an inch step down is gonna be more than enough. I want to leave negative 0.05 radial material that makes sure I cut all the extra stock away. But for the axial, I'm gonna leave a positive 0.015. That's how I'm gonna set up my parameters for my passes tab. On the linking tab, I wanna do a minimum retraction I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make this tool stay down as much as possible, so I'm gonna choose like 80%. And if it should need to reposition, I want it to reposition as quickly as I can, I'm gonna set this to be 400. Now what this number is for your machine, I don't know. Machines have rapid feed rate and they have a cutting feed rate. You wanna set this to be the maximum cutting feed rate of your machine. When I'm done with that, I can choose okay. And I'm just gonna get a little adaptive clearing operation that takes the hat of material. If I click on setup one and I click on setup two and I simulate this, when I click on the adaptive, this is what the stock looks like when it comes off of the first operation. So you can see the hat of material. That's all I'm trying to get rid of. So I can hit play and you'll see that the adaptive just goes, it stays above the part, and it just gets rid of that material. Now that I have that material gone, I can create a new setup, and I can probe off of the actual X, Y faces of the part that have been nice and machined. I should also note that if I had a machine with a probe, I could do an in-process probing operation here. Everybody has access to that with a paid license of Fusion, and I could just pick that up without creating a setup. If you're like me and you have a Heimer or maybe an edge finder, you need to create a, another operation as I'm going to do. And so that's the way I'm gonna to choose to do it that way because not everybody has a probe, but everybody with a probe can follow along and do the same thing that I am. So that's all I'm gonna do for the second setup and I'll exit the simulation and we'll get working on roughing out the remaining stock on this part. With the hat of material removed, I can do one last setup where I can start doing my roughing operations. I'll do one more setup and I'm gonna get my work coordinate system oriented the right way just like I did before. So I clicked on the base of the Z in a flat face I wanna be perpendicular to. And I'll just click on the X arrowhead to flip it the, arrow, the direction I want to go. I'm gonna click on this dot and I'm gonna rotate around. I'm gonna grab the bottom left-hand corner is where I want that to be located. I'm also gonna tell Fusion what the model is. So I'll go ahead and click on the model and let it know what I intend to machine. On the stock tab, instead of from preceding stock, I'm gonna say a fixed size box. And the way I have mine is I've got the roundup to nearest set to zero. So the size that you see is the actual bounding box of the part right now. So 2.8 by 1.88 by this number for Z is the actual bounding box of the part. Everything is good to go. I'm going to touch off on the finished machine face for X. I'm going to touch off on the finished machine face for Y. And Z should need to be reset. It should be the same for the previous setup that I created. And I can choose OK. So I've got my setup completed and ready to go. And I can go and do a 3D adaptive clearing. So from the 3D menu, I'm gonna choose adaptive clearing. I'm gonna use that same half inch end mill. And for the preset, I'm going to again choose stainless steel roughing. My geometry, I'm gonna tell Fusion that I wanna machine away anything inside of the yellow orange box. I'm not gonna click on anything. On the heights, I need to make a small adjustment here. The stock top is fine, but I don't wanna go all the way to the model bottom. I just wanna go down to this level where I have things machined to. So if I hit the drop down and I choose a selection, I'm just gonna click on that face. That's as deep as I wanna go for where I wanna machine this. The passes, again, I'm just gonna use the default step over that this tool has for stainless steel roughing. My maximum roughing step down, I can make that a little bit larger. I'm gonna set that to be an inch. And to start out with, I'm gonna set my fine step down to be 0.15. That's not a great value, I just wanna show you what this number does. I'm not gonna turn on order by area. We're gonna come back and see what that does in a bit. But for the radial and axial stock to leave, I'm gonna set that to be 10 thousandths of an inch. On the linking tab, again, I'm gonna do a minimum retraction. 
and I want to set my stay down level to 80% again. I might even increase my stay down distance. I'm going to set that to four. And for my new engagement feed rate for my machine, I'm going to put that at 400. Remember, that's your maximum cutting feed rate that your machine can do. With those values entered, I'm going to choose OK and see what I get for a toolpath. All right, things look to have completed. I'm going to click on my setup and say simulate. I'm going to watch what this tool does. You're going to see that it's going to do the adaptive across the bulk of it. I'll slow down just a little bit when we get to, towards the end here. And what you're going to see once it finishes removing the bulk of that material, it's going to start to step up the angled faces 150 thousandths at a time. Right now, it's not doing a very efficient job at it. It's kind of machining all the ridges on the same depth, and it's jumping around an awful lot as you watch it make its transition moves. I'll speed this up a little bit so we can see our final result. And what we'll also see is we left an awful lot of material for that ball mill to try to come back and finish machine later. One other thing I don't like about this, it doesn't really hurt us, but the tool is trying to fit in as much as it can between these two faces. And it doesn't really help me for my next operation, so I might actually try to make it not do that. Let's exit the simulation and go work on that. I'm gonna to switch to the design tab. And one of the things I find when I work with customers is they tell me they never go to the surface workspace for uh, different tasks. And I use it quite a lot for machining. From the create menu, I'm gonna choose the loft option just to get a quick and dirty uh, patch surface that I need here. And I'm just gonna click on those two edges. Now, instead of hitting OK and restarting the command, I'm just going to right click and say repeat loft. That's going to complete the first loft I've created and let me go and select two new edges. So I'll repeat loft again one more time. Click on this edge and this edge, repeat loft. And then here's my last two edges. And now I can hit OK and I've got those patch surfaces. I don't even need to see them. I can expand out the bodies and I can turn those off. They're not needed. I'll go back to manufacture and I'm going to edit my adaptive and I'll choose on the geometry tab to override the model by including new patch services. So if I go to the models tab, expand this out, find the bodies folder, I can just click on the four different bodies that I've created. And now Fusion knows it can't go through those bodies. On the passes tab, I wanna make a couple adjustments while we're here. I'm gonna change the fine step down. I'm gonna make this much smaller. I'm gonna make this somewhere between 30 and 50 thousandths of an inch. Let me try 40 thousandths of an inch for this one. I'm also going to check order by area. And I'll hit okay. This tool path should take a little longer to calculate because I've given Fusion more things to think about. Uh, it still won't be too terrible, bad for the amount of work that it does for me in the uh, time it takes to create that adaptive toolpath. So let's simulate this and see the difference in results we get with those minor little tweaks. So again, it's gonna go through the middle of the part like it always did. It started a little different. The last toolpath kind of tried to go into the divot area. Um, this time, what we're gonna see is it's not gonna try to go there at all. Now notice with order by area, it's going up the entire angled face at once rather than jumping around at the same height for each angled face. So it makes the toolpath a lot more efficient. And you'll see it's gonna to continue to walk up that face and do its thing. Working on the final face, you see our ridges are much smaller and the toolpath is much more efficient than what it was. So I really like that. I could even get it to stop doing that. I'm okay with that a little spot that it's going through right there though. Not that big of a deal. And that is my adaptive clearing operation that's going to remove the bulk of the material on this side of the part. I hope you picked up some pointers and tips about flipping your part over and working on the opposite side, getting rid of the hat and starting to rough out your part. In the next video, I'll continue roughing out the remaining material and start working on the drilling and finishing toolpaths. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, or you can also email me, kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com. And as always, thanks for watching.